Welcome back, folks. We are here at the world famous 510 Bellagio. I brought three bullets with me, and we sit with the max $2,500. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like I could lose 25% of my bankroll in one session, so let's get to it. By the way, these um, $10 chips were very confusing for pretty much the entire session, but we're a little bit card dead to start off, but I pick up Ace-10 off soon, low jack, raise things up to $30. Not 60 this time, as I did a couple times, but... Raise it up to $30, folds round, and both the blinds make the call. So we are three ways to a flop of King Jack 7, two clubs. Beautiful flop. We do have the gut shot and the nut flush blocker. So when it checks to me, I fire out for $30. We do get some action. We get both callers. We're heading off to the turn, which is the King of Hearts. A little bit iffy now, but when it checks to me, I'm going to keep firing for 110. Even if my opponent has a king, it's still going to be like a little bit of a rough spot. But if they don't have a king, they're obviously going to fold. And we're going to assess River. Small blind gets out of the way, and now big blind makes the call. So it might be shutting down. River comes down the eight of clubs, a really good card for us. We can have some ten nines here. Not many, but some. And we also have the nut flush blocker. My opponent checks it over, and... This guy is playing quite conservative. He just doesn't look like he wants to get involved with this entire stack and make a hero call without the nuts. Just kind of like the feel I got from him. So I think, and this is a lot of stock to put in this, but I think that we can get him off a weak king here. So I do go ahead and ship it all in. My opponent doesn't love it. Thanks for a bit. Thanks for a bit. And eventually does find the fold. So we are picking up a pretty nice pot here to start our first 510 Vegas session. Look at that, picking up another premium, Ace-10 offsuit again, and I raise things up to $40 on the button. I do go a bit bigger on the button than normal, and now small blind fires at a 3-bet of $200. 5x out of position. Seems alright since we are quite deep. I generally don't like to use sizes this big, as Ace-10 off now can't call, and I want those kinds of hands in my opponent's range when we're playing, you know, big pots out of position. But Ace-10 off can't call, so you know what that means. I fire at the 4-bet to $500. I do size down a little bit, even though we are quite deep. I want my opponent to be able to call with a hand like Jack-10 suited, 10-9 suited, something we dominate. And I don't want to go up against a range that's only Ace-Queen suited plus. So, I throw up for 500. My opponent makes a pretty quick call. Off to a flop of Ace-9-4 rainbow. Pretty, pretty good. I'm going to start with a small bet here. It doesn't have to be too big, so I fire up for 20%, $200, and my opponent makes the call. Off to the turn, which is the five of clubs. It's getting a little bit too thin to bet here. My hand's a little bit too strong to bluff, so that leaves one option, and I check it back. Off to the river, which is the beautiful ten of spades. My opponent checks it over, and now I've got to decide on a sizing. We almost definitely have the best hand here. Unless my opponent's pocket tens, which would suck, but besides that, we probably have the best hand here. And I decided between an all-in or a smaller, more reasonable bet of around 66%, and I think... Most of my hands want to go into the 66% range here. Uh, a lot of the hands that I'm going for value with are ace dominant. So ace king, ace queen, ace 10. And we block a ton of that. So I don't think we have to go too, too big here. So I fire out for 850. My opponent thinks it over, thinks it over. But unfortunately decides on a fold. I'm very happy with that. Picking up a huge pot with ace 10 off. And we might have got there on the river. Maybe not. Who knows? Okay, under the gun has raised. He's just table changed, but he looks like a pro. He just does. Uh, he raises up to $30. I've got Ace-5 suited in low jack. I think three bets the best option, so I raise things up to $100. We do get a cold caller from the cutoff and folds back round. Now the under the gun player goes for the four bet. All the way up to $420. And now it's on me. And for some reason, like, I study my ranges a lot, but I thought that this was a call. This is actually a 2x 5 bet up to 800-ish, which I really wish I remembered because that would have been a fun play. But I didn't remember it. I make the call and cut off folds. Off to a flop, which comes above average. Queen, six, four, two diamonds. We have the backdoor straight draw and the nut flush draw. Pretty nice. So my opponent now checks it over to me, which is kind of surprising. Once he 4-bets, this queen high board is going to be a lot better for him than me. But, I don't know. Maybe he's got kings or something that's worried about trapping me trapping with aces or me having queens. But, either way, I'm going to go for the bet here. I fire out for 350. It doesn't have to be big. The pot's already huge. And my opponent makes the call. Off to the turn, which is okay. It's the ace of hearts. 
Uh, my opponent now checks it over. Now his ace kings, his ace jacks, ace tens have gotten there, which I don't really like. And I think betting here would just be a little bit too merged. So I'm just going to check it back and play some rivers. Rivers really bad. It's the king of spades. Losing to a lot now. And now my opponent fires out a bet of $800, about half pot. And I don't see anything that we beat here. We beat pocket jacks and pocket tens, and that's it. Uh, yeah, if my opponent can find those bluffs, like, good for him, but I just don't think we're going to be good here. So, make a pretty, pretty frustrating fold here. Things were looking good on the flop, okay on the turn, and then just disaster on the river. That one is not going to go our way. On to the next hand. We have 8 6 of hearts in the hijack, raise things up to $30, and only the big blind comes along for the ride. We go to a flop, which is pretty nice. Ace, jack, 10, two hearts. He checks to me, and I don't know if there's a small or big bet flop, but I decided to go for a small bet this time. It's probably never wrong to do this, so I fire up for 20, and my opponent makes the call. See a really good turn card. The king of hearts, putting a one-liner to a straight, and more importantly, completing our flush. Now my opponent actually leads out on this card for $60. Um... I don't know, I just feel like he'd bet bigger with a flush. Or just not lead at all with a flush, so I really think he's got a queen here. I look over to stack, and I, I remember him having like $300 in blacks. And I was like, oh, the rest of his chips must be at most 150 but he has 700 behind. <laughs> Those $10 chips are very deceiving. So I just move all in pretty quickly. I don't even ask him for a count. My opponent takes about 10 seconds before flicking in the call. I announce flush, he shows his hand, we're off the river, which is the three of clubs, and my opponent has the nine five of hearts. Oh, that is devastating, but I really thought we could get a nice free roll, or make it look like we're trying to get a free roll with like ace queen or the ace of hearts, a hand like that, and then maybe he would hero us off with a queen, hoping for the chop, but unfortunately not, we're going to get flush over flush for the max that hand. On to the next one. We are playing against the same opponent. Let's see if it goes better for us this time. He has limped under the gun, and I raised things up to $40 with the ace seven of spades. Pulls back around, and he's the only player to make the call. So we're going heads up to a flop, which is beautiful. Ace, jack, seven, two diamonds. Pretty connected flop. There's a lot of hands that can continue here, so I'm going to fire out a pretty big bet of $60. It's only two-thirds pop, but for a flop bet, it's quite big. My opponent makes the call. Head into the turn, which is the nine of diamonds, completing the front door flush. My opponent once again checks it over, and I think we can absolutely still go for value here. He led out with a flush, so that means his range is a lot weaker this time, so I fire out for 150. He makes the call again. We're heading to the river, which is the deuce of hearts. My opponent checks it over, and it's pretty clear we got the best hand here. He would have led out at some point if he had a better hand, so even if I had a bluff, anything, I would go for a very big bet on the river. About pot sounds good, so I fire out for $500. Put my opponent in the tank, thinks it over, thinks it over. Unfortunately, this time decides on a fold, but we're picking up a smallish medium pot here, getting back to unstuck. Picking up King Jack offsuit in early position here. This shouldn't really be a raise, but I make it $30. We do get two callers, so we're going three ways to a flop, which is quite nice. Jack, six, five, two clubs. I fire up for one third pot, $30 here. Low Jack makes a call, and now High Jack raises to 130 little bit iffy him raising to two players, but I'm not believing this just yet, so I make the call, as does the low jack. We go to a pretty interesting turn, which is the four of clubs. Pretty much everything gets there. <laughs> so I check it over, and action checks all the way through. Head into the river, which is the eight of hearts. Doesn't change much, but I don't think we go for value here. I check it over. Low jack fires up for 300. High jack folds, and... Yeah, not much I can do here. This is unfortunate. I don't think I can hero this off, so I just make the fold, and we are off to the next hand. So this is actually a time-raked game, which means there's no incentive to actually chop the blinds. You may as well play them. Small blind now opens up to $30. I got aces, so I immediately 3-bet to 100 and he takes about 3 whole seconds and fires out a 4-bet of 350 Love it. Now... In this spot, this is probably going to be a 5-bet to about 620, I think if my math is right. 
620 to 500, something around there. Sorry, 620 to 700, somewhere around there. But I just get the sense that he's bluffing and he's just going to be able to fold his ace jack off suit kind of thing. Just the speed he went at for a four bet. So I'm just going to call in position and set the trap. We go to a flop of ace jack six rainbow. Uh, if he wasn't bluffing now and he had kings, queens, we're not really going to get any value. If he's got jacks, that's the only hand we get paid by. But he fires out a very small bet of 160. Raising here would just be insane, so I make the call. We're off to the turn, which is another jack. Pretty interesting, but he's just not going to have any jacks here, right? Like, he can have pocket jacks for sure, but he's not going to have, like, king jack offsuit or something like that, I don't think. So he checks it over. We're just going to have to trap and pray that he puts money in on the river. So I check it back. River is the four of diamonds. Nothing changes. Unfortunately, he checks it back once more. I just don't think he's got anything here to call with besides quads <laughs> and if he's got quads he's got quads or if he's got ace jack but besides that I don't think there's anything we're getting value from so may as well go super big make it super polarized and at least that way when we have bluffs it has more chance of getting through as well so I fire an all-in wager my opponent doesn't think for too too long and like I said we just got this board way too locked up there's not much he can call with here and my opponent does make the fold I do not think a size of like one fifth pot here on the river does anything. I think he still finds a fold. So I don't think we're getting any money out of him, no matter how small I bet, unless it's like $30. But I'm not going for $30. So <laughs> the final hand button is raised up to 30, and I make the call in the big blind 9 5 suited. Off to a flop of 9 4 deuce, two hearts, one spades. We got top pair, but it's pretty weak. I check it over, and my opponent fires out for half pot 30. Nothing to do here but call. I think raising a little bit too thin, so we're heading to a turn, which is the Jack of Spades. It's one card over my nine, but I'm not too concerned with it. I check it over. My opponent up fires up for 50. And now I really want to raise. I think we're good here. But the board's very dynamic. We are out of position. Our hands very weak if we do raise. So I just toss in the call. We're gonna go to a river, which is the Ten of Hearts. I check it over, and now my opponent fires out about 66%, $140 here. This link feels off. 50%, 40%, 66%. It's a very weird bet sizing line, and I feel like he's connected with this river. Something like 10-8 comes to mind. Ace-10 maybe. Something just feels like he hit this river and it's going for thin value, and I don't think my 9-5 is good anymore. At least that's what I was thinking in my head when this went through. So I fired a raise all the way up to $400, and my opponent thinks it over, thinks it over, and then makes the call. I table my hand, it is no good, my opponent the 10-4 suited. It's interesting flop and turn bets, especially for those sizings. I don't know if those are bluffs or value bets. And then on the river, he did make a really good call, so nice hand. That one is not going our way, and we're going to end this 5-10 uh, session a little bit stuck. Alright guys, that's going to wrap up my session over at the Bellagio 510. Unfortunately, the only 510 session I played in Vegas. I'll be playing more now that I'm here in Arizona, but for that session, we were in the game for $3,500, out for $2,480 for a pretty small loss of $1,020. You know, I'll take it. The bankroll numbers would have been in episode 68, as this one is released post-date. But anyways, thank you so much for like for watching. But yeah, do go ahead and like the video as well, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.